Okay, Mike Masato, CEO of Staff Driven Dental and the Dental Road Warrior returning from a long, for a long overdue uh, episode 74 in the series. Um, I think I'm gonna start a series of uh, videos um, having to do with my, uh, call it my fixed ideas series. Because a lot of what I do with coaching is working on what's been going on between your two ears, uh, with, which is the, you know, some of our, uh, can be our biggest enemy, which is our head about things. And we get these ideas into our head, these, these fixed ideas, which are ideas or thoughts about some things about the way thing, the things are, uh, without any kind of really investigation into them. Because we've heard from everybody, or everyone says, or everyone thinks, or everyone feels this way, and I don't know who everyone is, usually it's people that are struggling and not doing well, who like to commiserate and find other people, because misery loves company, about how poorly they're doing in practice, all right? But I can tell you the ones that are doing something about it, and not being in their head about it, and, and, and taking coaching to get out of their head into the game, uh, they're not having these fixed ideas get in their way. You know, a big one is the economy. You know, I hear this one all the time about the economy, and this started back in 2007, 2008, uh, after the economy crashed, you know, and it was always a big thing about the economy and, and how we got to circle the wagons and not spend money right now. And I, I, I have a shout out back to episode one with my first episode was your accountant and the contractionist model of growth and how accountants love you to look at your numbers and you know count things down and, and pinch every penny before you let, before you know it, there's no more pennies left to pinch because they don't want you spending and investing in anything. As you, and as you know, you have to invest money intelligently to make money, especially in your practice. So if you're not spending money at all, don't spend money on marketing, don't spend money on consulting, don't spend money on the business part of your practice uh, because you know what, you can't afford it. You know, well, you can't afford not to. You know, and these fixed ideas is limiting thinking that holds you back in many areas. There's an old story I used to tell um, that I that I'm going to read right now that I have propped up here uh, while I'm driving uh, about a, it, it was an old adage from an old story. It probably happened around the turn of the century. It's kind of dated, at least the way it's written. But the, the thought process is is very similar. You know, this little story to what, how sometimes we start thinking in dentistry. The, the story was called "The Man Who Sold Hot Dogs." So I want to read this little story to you, and it goes something like this: There once was a man who sold hot dogs by the side of the road. Uh, he had difficulty hearing, so he had no radio. He had poor vision, so he didn't watch television, but he sold good hot dogs. He put up signs on the highway telling how good they were. He stood out by the side of the highway and cried, buy a hot dog, mister, and people bought. He increased his meat and bun orders. He bought a bigger stove uh, to take care of his trade. And then finally, some, his son got home from college one day and said, hey, you know, to help him out. And, but then something happened. He says, he said, it's, the son said, hey, father, haven't you been listening to the radio? Haven't you been reading the newspapers? There's a big depression. The European, the European situation is terrible. This domestic situation is worse. Whereupon the father cut down on his meat and bun orders, took down his advertising signs, and no longer you know, bothered to stand out on the highway to sell his hot dogs. And his hot dog sell, sales fell almost overnight, right? And you're right, son, he said, the father said to the boy, we're certainly in the middle of a Great Depression. You know? and, and, and the moral of the story is, although in dentistry we're not selling hot dogs, the principle is the same. Well, being cautious is good, but being overly cautious can be a mistake. If you plan for a down year, you most certainly will have one. One thing's for sure, business goes on and so will we. And guess what? You know, it's amazing how many people at Docs I meet are still complaining about an economy crash that happened 10 years ago. And they never recovered because they're still in that thinking, right? The economy has recovered. But what's going to be your next excuse? You know, I hear these excuses all the time. We get these ideas, oh, people in this town. Mike, you don't understand the people in this town. You know, they don't want to spend money. Well, guess what? When had there ever been a time in recorded history, if you really think about it, that anybody wanted to spend money on dentistry? Was there a time, you know, 20, 30 years ago when people walked into your office and said, hey, I got money, I can't wait to give it to you. Here you go. You know, it never happens. You know, it, it, that's just the way it is. You know, oh, but the people in my town, they, let me guess the people in your town, they're all crazy, right? Right, oh, how'd you know? Because there are, patients are crazy everywhere when it comes to dentistry. They just are, you know, and you just have to get better at handling crazy people. You know, I, I joke about this all the time. I work in the dental field. I see all kinds of crazy every single day. You know, that's what I get. That's what I sign up for to help. You know, crazy people get less crazy, get more sane, enjoy practice more, do better in business, have better lives. That's what it's all about, right? And that's what you're doing with patients every single day. But if you have, if you're walking around with these ideas, this limiting thinking you have, like in this little story we told you, you start believing it. That's just the way it is. You know, my, my advice to you is to surround yourself with some people that are, you know, upwardly mobile, moving and shaking, making things happen, you know, positive, and, and, and have a plan and going in there and executing to make things better every single day. Because the first thing I hear, when, you know, when I'm at an event or, you know, to, to speak at a uh, uh, dinner night, I love the dinner workshops because people sit around, they're drinking before and sometimes, you know, I just saw and talk to people as they're all commiserating at the bar together, talking about how bad things are. And I, I have to lean in and go, so what are you doing about it? You know, you can complain all you want, 
all right, and have these ideas in your head, but that's not going to change anything for the better. I can tell you that for, for a fact, you know? And I, so the best place to be is out of your head about this thing and make sure that you're not holding yourself back by your own thinking, you know? And that's kind of what coaching does, you know? It, it has us take a look at, you know, get some distance from, you know, things that are in the head. So let's take a look at this. Let me give you a different perspective because the benefit of having outside coaching and people come in, we're all over, you know, we see it all. I mean, I'm in practice all the time, coaches are in the practice all the time. We see what's happening out there. In, in, in reality, and we can tell you the reality, we, we will tell you the truth, because you know, when you talk to your colleagues, they don't always tell you the truth, oh, everything's going great, everything's terrible, you know, whatever, you don't really know what's going on, you know, we know what's going on, because we see it with our own, to our own two eyes, we're there, we're experiencing it firsthand, you know, what, what's, what's real, we'll tell you what's real, we'll tell you where the challenges are, and what's happening, and what could potentially be a, uh, a pitfall for you, and what could be holding you back, right, but I can tell you, the first, it starts and ends with your own head, uh, uh, that's for sure, and, and these fixed ideas, this limiting thinking uh, that holds us back, you know, in, in the game of dentistry. And of course, we, 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 we tend to feel that way. We, we lack the certainty because we, you know, in this area. And that's what holds us back a lot of times too. We're in doubt a lot. You know, you're not in doubt about your clinical dentistry, right, docs? I hope at this stage of the game, for as many of the thousands of hours you've spent in training to master your craft, you don't have doubts about that. You're not worried about all, oh, you know, one day you're gonna walk in there and you, you can't do your job clinically. You know that you don't. You're certainly going to not know what to do and how to care for people or make make it work. You know, if you get a patient in the chair and they're, you know and they they need to work, you're going to get it done and you're going to do it well, right? Well, the the, the 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 doubts come in is when we're really not certain about what we're doing and how to do it. You know, on this area of business and people, which is a big part of our practice, that these can these ideas can creep into our head that you know, and we start we start buying into that stuff and we we, we feel in, insecure and inefficient in our ways and we and it, but it's okay to admit that and that's the first, that's the, on the path to get help so rather than put these ideas in your head that this is the way it's got to be because the dentistry you know the business of dentistry the industry of dentistry is going down and all of the another one big one fixed idea all oh, the dso's you know the dso's are going to kill us and wipe us out of business we got to sell out you don't got to do all that you know i know a lot do because they believe it they truly believe that's the only way out and that's the only thing they can do all right but there are other avenues but you got to talk to the right people and have the right people in your life influencing you and having you think and look at things a certain way, you know, because the, like I said, this thinking can really hold us back at what detriment. Listen to this story about, you know, this, you know, buy, buying into this thinking. It's because it's the dad in the story had no I fixed ideas about being out there and just going for it every single day. You know, it, it, he was doing well. And then the minute you know, the son come in with the bright ideas about whatever, haven't you heard? And you see what's going on? Then you should be suffering and failing too. How can you possibly be doing well in a down economy? Well, I can show you a lot of people are doing great in a, in, a, in, a, in a down economy. I had people back then, 10 years ago, that were still doing great in a down economy. You know why? Was it more challenging? Sure it was, right? But they, they knew something had happened and they had to do something different and go about it differently. Business of dentistry is constantly changing and you need to change too. And as I said before, I think the best place to start in listening as I wrap up this video is start looking at your own thinking in your head. You know, what, what are we looking at every day? How are we feeling? How are we thinking every single day? And is it limiting? Are we being limited by our fixed ideas? All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please continue to share them. And uh, I'll be back uh, with another episode soon.